Okay, welcome. <laughs> welcome, amigos, to DrupalCon, of course. And we're day two, so I hope everyone's having fun. Um, we've been having fun, so. Um, we're here to talk about migration into Drupal 8. Um, some people say that there's no migration path in Drupal, but that's not true. So we're going to talk about how you can actually get stuff into Drupal 8 today. And we will talk about what's coming in the future. So um, my name is Ryan Wheel. I work based out of Montreal in Canada. And this is my colleague, Novella. Um, maybe do you want to say hello on Espanol? <laughs> hola, me llamo Novella. And, oh, sorry, OK. So my name is Novella. And <laughs> this presentation, of course, will be about migration. Um, as Ryan said, we work in Montreal. And we are 2 thirds of the CAFE team. We do a lot of migrations, and we are very interested in migrations, especially for Drupal 8, mostly because it's, it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So what is migration? Um, how many people have used migrate in Drupal 7? Is this familiar to people? OK, roughly half. Probably. Okay. And how many people are missing some chunks of hair from this migration experience? <laughs> you raise your hand. <laughs> and how many people have upgraded Drupal sites in the past using the upgrade.php page? So a little bit more, but about half as well. Okay. So um, migration and upgrade are different things when we're talking about this stuff. Um, migration is a set of templates that you can use to port your data. And it ports your data by connecting to your old data source. And in this case, we're going to be talking about Drupal 6, because that is what is currently in Drupal 8 core. Um, there is a plan to get Drupal 7 to migrate as well, in addition to other things. So um, let's talk a bit more about that. <laughs> in Drupal 7, there was a package called Migrate Drupal to Drupal. And this was a set of templates for bringing data from Drupal 5, Drupal 6, and Drupal 7 into Drupal 7. It was originally done as a proof of concept for maybe doing a new migration path. Um, and it's now been declared the new standard. So that old upgrade.php page is gone. And that one, it used to work that you would take your Drupal 6 sites and you would just drop your D7 site on top of it and run upgrade PHP. So it's a little bit different now that we're actually connecting to an old site and not changing it at all, but just changing our new site and using that. Um, so a little bit more about the Drupal to Drupal templates is that if you were using them in Drupal 7, they are object oriented, which is great news for many people. Um, obviously, the Drupal 8 system is more object-oriented, and they continue to be so in Drupal 8. So um, it's also worth noting <laughs> this happened later in the development process in Drupal 8. It was actually after Feature Freeze, I believe, that it was decided to put Migrate into core. So as a result, some things are still in progress. Now. Um, you may have noticed I talked about Drupal 6 as opposed to Drupal 7 as the initial path. We're now able to skip over versions. So this is really great when you're looking at like older sites that are now nearing end of life. As many of you know, when Drupal 8 gets released, in theory, Drupal 6 will be no longer supported for security updates. So there's an urgent need to move Drupal 6 sites to something else. And rather than drag people through two versions, which can be very difficult to upgrade, we can skip right over that and just say, OK, we can connect to D6, pull all of the data out, and make a wonderful new Drupal 8 site. Um, so there is still a plan to kind of replicate that old upgrade.php page with all of this working magically under the hood. And that is currently flagged for not 8.0.0, but the 8.1.x release. So it may or may not be there in 8.0.0. But before you go and say, there's no migrate in core, there is actually two migrate modules in core. 
Um, the migrate module that runs the migration is there. It's working. It can be used today. And then the migrate underscore Drupal module, which is the equivalent to migrate D2D in the old version. And what that one does is that has all of the mappings in D6 to say a D6 UID is going to become a D8 UID. And it has mappings for each of the fields so that you don't have to do that. So here's what we're looking at for version support. Currently, D6 to D8 is in core right now, and it has been for months. Um, D7 to D8 is in the process of development, and that's happening in a sandbox off, off of the main migrate path. So um, what's going to happen there is people are going to build the templates to a point where the quality is really good, and then those will get brought into the migrate underscore Drupal module in D8 core. Um, the, the templates between D6 and D7 are not very different, so it's probably going to start moving very fast in the near future. Um, if you're interested in helping with that process, we'll give you uh, some information at the end of this presentation on how you can connect to people that will allow you to get in there into the sandbox and work with that. And lastly, D8 to D8, because sometimes you need to rescue projects. <laughs> And in D7, this became a really popular option when you take on a rescue project and you go, okay, well, the data's in that D7 site, but the code in that site may not be what we want to use. So for people that were doing rescue projects, having a path within the same version is very important. And there is also talk about using um, migrate to do migrations between the different beta versions of D8. Um, I still haven't seen any templates for that yet, but this little rumor has been around, <laughs> so it's something that's out there. Um, and then lastly, I put an asterisk here that, you know, of course, D6 support should, in theory, stop when D8 is released, but there's also been some discussion about extending that temporarily for a period to allow people to do that transition. But there's really um, an imminent need to move away from D6 because as security updates get applied, there's not as much testing framework in D6 to make sure that that's all stable, so there's always a risk every time we make a change. So in the, in the long term, we would like to see D6 kind of move on. Um, here's the exciting stuff. Do you want to talk a little bit about this? I can talk a little bit about this, um, although you're definitely more <laughs> the multilingual guy than I am. Um, so, as it says, you know, everything that's in D8 core um, now will be pulled in from D6. Um, you know, even if it was in contrib for D6, uh, but it's in core now, then it'll definitely come. Configurations is a very important part, at least for site builders. Um, one thing that has been you know, very troublesome for D7 was to have to replicate every click manually. Not fun. Um, for D8, that's not something that we really have to worry about. Um, and that comes over, you know, with, um, with all of the database in the code when you migrate. Um, so, okay. Multilingual is a big aspect of this, as many of you have probably heard today. The new multilingual system in Drupal 8 is as Gabor describes it, a wonderland. <laughs> it's so much easier to use than other systems. D7 was well supporting for multilingual as compared to other content management solutions. D8 goes way further with this, extends it throughout the system, so all aspects of the system can be translated. But in the old system, you needed like 10 modules, 12 modules, 15 modules to make everything translatable. Um, almost everything's translatable by default now. I can't think of a single thing that isn't. Um, so that stuff was contrib, but because it's now in core, we're actually reaching back into the old system and we're grabbing that contrib data and pulling it in. So, so um, pro tip, if you had a contrib module in D6 that is now in core, even if you disabled it and uninstalled it, you think that it went bye-bye, it might not have completely done so. So for instance, one really big thing that people have run into is the book module. You know, in D6, a lot of people had it on, then you turn it off, you know, will you use it? 
Now it's in core, so remember to um, enable it when you go into D8 when you're doing your migrations. Otherwise, you'll just get a whole bunch of corrupt. So this is, this is kind of an open bug because what happens here is that in past versions, we always supported moving the data forward. So if you enable the module that's in core now at some point and you have data there, we want to bring it across, but it needs somewhere to go. So if you don't have the target module enabled, you're going to need to enable that. There will be better support for um, catching those errors in the future, but um, something to watch out for. Um, a couple other points on this note. Um, views were initially talked about as being a, maybe an exception to this, but uh, currently they're not in core uh, as being supported for the migration, but there is work being done on making a migration for views um, I guess it's also worth noting that your content types get set up. If you were looking at your D7 migrations and thinking, I have to set up all these content types, you don't even need to do that. Because the idea is that when we do have that replacement for upgrade.php, which we'll talk about in a minute, um, the ideal is that we have the same process. So you should be able to go to a page and click upgrade and bam, everything's there. So this stuff should come through. Um, another example of areas that are kind of tepid support is um, migrating your blocks. Blocks come across, but if you're not using one of the default themes, we don't really know where to put things. So what's gonna happen is your blocks are gonna come across and you're gonna have to place them in your new theme. So something to watch out for as well. There's, a, there's even more wonderful stuff in Migrate that um, handles the multilingual stuff because multilingual structures have changed. And the biggest one of these is that you, in the past, if you had translations, you would have one node for English and one node for Spanish, and they would have to know about each other. And sometimes you had to do the node in English before Spanish or in Spanish before English, and it always had to be the same process. All of that is gone. It's now one node. So if you have a car in English and an automobile in French, you know that it's one object. So now in Drupal 8, they are one object. So during the migration, all of these pieces get merged into one object. So, so one thing to watch out for then is when you're bringing things over, say you had you know, however many um, nodes because you had you know, X number of languages, now they will all be one node. So if you don't see them, don't worry. Yeah, you'll see them in the interface, and we'll show you an example of that in a minute. Um, configuration of translations should come through as well. Uh, there's more details of that in the config management side of things. Um, so just kind of be aware that that's out there. But um, most importantly, test these things a lot, because not everyone has multilingual sites. I suspect many people in this room do. So you will want to like, run some tests on these things while we have the chance now. Maybe at the sprint tomorrow, you can come and like, try running some stuff. Um, try it in your own time. Try it on your agency sites. And you know, report issues if you find issues with, my, with particularly multilingual migrations. Because sometimes these cases don't get covered, as I'm sure we all know if we work on multilingual sites. So now, let's talk a little bit about how this is envisioned to work in the user interface. So first, we need to know that we need to enable the migrate and migrate Drupal modules. And we mentioned just a second ago that you do need to have all of your target mod modules enabled. So if you were using aggregator, make sure that's enabled. If you're using book, make sure it's enabled. Translation support, make sure it's enabled. Then you're ready to go. One thing that's definitely tripped people up um, while they were getting things set up was just the PHP and Drush versions. And I know people are always harping on this, and I'll do it again. Make sure that your PHP and Drush versions are proper for Drupal 8, because they are a bit different from Drupal 7. So yeah, first step, install Drupal 8. <laughs> Second step, enable all the modules. And then third step is make sure you've enabled Migrate and Migrate Drupal. And now you're kind of ready to do the basics. We're going to go one step further, though, because in this initial part of our presentation, we want to talk about the Migrate Upgrade module, which is 
the replacement for the upgrade.php page. So migrate upgrade is contrib at the moment. It will, this is the one that will be merged into probably 8.1.x. And it replaces upgrade.php with just slash upgrade. Now, we couldn't put .php because then we would have to put a file there. And right now, this is just a, a config page in Drupal, so it's great. We can just use this. Um, it's going to ask us to input our credentials for the D6 site, so it's important that these live on the same host because that way it can run really fast and we don't have to worry about firewalls. We don't have to worry about the Wi-Fi stopping. We don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Um, we do need to put in an address where we can access the files, and um, I believe right now at the moment this interface um, also uses this to do some uh, text handling, so it may look for this address pattern in your body text and other things like that. But um, in any case, you do need to have your files somewhere. And you can put in a path as well for your private files. So of course, in Drupal 6, you, I think you had the option of public or private. Um, and then there were some hacks you could do to do both, but they were kind of <laughs> weird. But um, <laughs> it's in core, and it has been since D7. So. Um, private files can be put into this interface. If the uh, public files, um, you know, if, if it throws an error with the public files address that you stick in there um, through the interface, you may need to um, put a snippet of code, which you can copy and paste, luckily, <laughs> um, for me, uh, in your manifest file, which we'll talk about in just a bit. So, yeah, so right now we're looking at the UI, and it's, it is the most buggy part of the system. So let's just, let's get through the UI, and then let's get to the good stuff. So this is what the migrate upgrade page looks like. We put in some database credentials and an address, and then we go, we scroll down, if you can imagine. We're not doing a live demo here. Um, there's your public files directory, and then it just says perform upgrade, and then things are gonna run. <laughs> um, the configuration is going to import first, because we need our node types to be there so that we can put stuff into them. Um, we get the site name, we get like all of those types of settings, we get your like, uh, whatever preferences you configured when you first installed Drupal are all going to come through and be like what you set them to. Um, and then there's a hook that runs that you can take advantage of, which we'll get into more later. And uh, you can use the hook to override what's being done in this if you don't want to, if you want to minimize the amount of code you want to do. If Ideally, you don't have to do any if you're running it this way. And then boom, it's just going to do a status bar and it's going to run. Um, in D7, it was discouraged to run stuff in the user interface due to a bug in batch API that would time out on you and die. <laughs> it doesn't do that anymore. So um, because this is what we've always done in Drupal is we've gone to the upgrade PHP page, the intention is it will work in this way. So we are working out all the bugs, and that is hopefully going to work perfectly. Um, this is a snapshot of kind of an older version of the upgrade process, but it's pretty much the same. Um, it's going to say, yay, everything worked. It might tell you if something failed here. It might say, like, a couple things failed. Um, things go into the watchdog now. So if you're like, okay, where do I find out what happened? You can just go to the watchdog, like everything else. And that's on the reports page, as we all know. So, And then I put in this special slide because of what we said earlier. I want to point out we've got three nodes here, but as you can see, we've got five entries. And what this was in the old site, this first one was language neutral, so that appeared on all languages. So that's node one. The second node had a translation, so node two and three on the old site was like a French version and an English version. So we've got links to each of those, but they're actually one node under the hood. And then we've got a third node that was also translated, and again, that's showing as two entries in the interface, but in reality, it's actually one node. So if you hover over those edit links, you're going to see that the node IDs, there's actually only three of them there, but, um, but that's what you want. And in D7, this was called entity translation. So if you've used entity translation, you're probably going to be very excited about this. OK, do you want to talk a little bit about Drush? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, so as maybe you can tell, most of my comments are geared towards site builders, and this is actually something that um, I've tried to convince other site builders of, but do drush. Use it. 
um, and you know, use it wisely, of course. But this is one place where you really do want to use it. As you saw in the UI, it was very simple. You know, you put in your database credentials and you hit go and you just cross your fingers. Um, and I've done a lot of test migrations on, you know, the, with the Drupal 8 path, and I've done it both in the UI and with Drush. And one thing I found was that when I did it in the UI, if something screwed up, everything would stop. With Drush, um, luckily I can, uh, you know, I can run it, but I can make sure that um, I'm only running one piece at a time, and that's really nice. And of course, that is Drush with a combination of, um, you know, the manifest file, which we'll get to in a second. Um, you can do, you know, both Drush and the user interface, you know, just to see what's um, really going on behind the scenes. But this is basically just a plug for using Drush as site builders. <laughs> so this is what is, if you want to just use core and not use that contrib module, this is the way that people are usually building the migrations and testing them in real life. This is what the developers are using. So as developers, this is the most accessible thing to most people. Um, now there's a few components of what's happening in the background. The first thing is that in order to do this in Drush, you're going to need a manifest file. And that's just a YAML file. It's just a text file that lists out the names of migrations. There's a bit more detail of that, but think of it just as a list of migrations you want to run. Um, there's a hook which we mentioned earlier, and you can use that hook to look at each item that you're pulling through as it comes in. And if you don't want it, you can say, bye-bye. I don't want this one. I don't want this node type. I don't want this particular node. I don't want this setting to come through because I'm going to do that myself. Um, this is the type of stuff that's very useful when you're building a site. Because maybe you want an entirely new site, and you just want the blog posts. That's important. So you could use the manifest file to specify what migrations to run, and then you can do a bit of processing just using a hook. By doing that, you can just put things into a .module file and just implement a hook, which is something that's very familiar if you're using Drupal 6 or Drupal 7. So that's like the easy way to get into this without like having to learn a whole bunch of crazy new things. So. about the hook is that even if you are using Drush and a manifest file, um, all your fields, for instance, um, may run, may try to run at the same time. And I know recently I've had a problem with, you know, running, say, image fields as opposed to, um, I don't know, text fields and, you know, integer uh, fields and things like that. So I just uh, used a hook to print everything out so I could really narrow it down um, and see what I needed to exclude in order to make the other fields come through. And that's a really great process for debugging, which is certainly necessary now and will probably be necessary even when things are a lot more stable. Now, the last thing, which is really where Migrate gets really awesome compared to the old version, is the plugins. And if you haven't used plugins, you should use them because they are awesome. Um, Plugins in Drupal 8 are just files that live in a special directory where they're known to be. So in this case, they could go into your custom module under the source folder, under plugin, under migrate, and then further into one of three different folders depending on what type of plugin you're using. And you can go into the migrate, or you could go into the core module's migrate folder, or the migrate underscore Drupal folder, and find examples of these and just copy them into your own module if they don't do what you want. And you can make them do whatever you want. All you need to do is make sure you update the name which appears in the comment and install your module and then you have a new plugin. Um, plugins can then be referenced in your manifest file as an override. So there's lots of opportunity here to just take something that's close to what you want and either modify it with a hook or just go and like create your own implementation. Um, I know with Drupal 7, we had people write migrations for like WordPress, <laughs> for Joomla, for Microsoft SQL Server things, um, for XML, um, all sorts of different handlers. So you can go into your migrate underscore Drupal folder, look at all those implementations and go, hmm, I bet I could write one for some other legacy platform, 
and you can make a module for that just by copying those files, renaming them, changing exactly what the schema of the database needs to be to make it work, and registering your own migrations that way. Um, there's also things called process plugins, and these are things that you can use to modify things as they go in, so you can do things like change all the titles to lowercase, and again, you can just reference that in the manifest file, so there's lots of cool things that you can do with that. Basically, it's all plugin-based, so you can just like remix these things, you can chain them, you can say, change all the titles to lowercase, and then like add three numbers to the end of it, and remove all the spaces, and you could just chain all these plugins together. So it's very extensible in that way. A manifest file looks like this. Kind of ignore the bullet points along the side, if you will, but, um, so we put it in the root, but it could go anywhere, as long as you reference it when you run the drush command. And in with this case, we've just provided a short example, but um, D6 user role, D6 user, D6 filter format, these can go in any order. So you don't need to worry about what order they're in. You just put them there. These are the names of the migrations. If you wanted to change the process plugin that was used, you could indent underneath one of those and change that by just saying what the process plugin you want to run will be. Um, you could also change the source or the destination. If maybe you wanted to turn users into nodes, you could do that, but that would be really weird. But you could do that. <laughs> Another good thing about um, doing it with Drush um, and using a manifest file to declare all these things is that um, when you run it in Drush, if you're missing anything in your manifest file, it'll just tell you right there, and then you just go put it in. Yeah. So it's going to calculate the dependencies, and it's going to say, um, I can't run nodes until I have users, because there's a user field on nodes, so I need a user to be there. So it's going to tell you, you, you must run D6 user. So this is very helpful. Um, as well, you can find out about all of the migrations. I've got a command listed here. Um, if you're using the most recent Drush, of course, it's very important to note, actually, we didn't have a slide about this. You need to have the latest Drush. <laughs> it needs to be Drush 7. Um, and you install that with Composer. So you also need to get Composer. And you get that from getcomposer.org, I believe. Um, There's anyway. also the option of using the drupal.org slash tools. I think that is the correct URL. Yeah, and Acquia Dev Desktop does have this installed as well. And so you could use De Acquia Dev Desktop to do your migrations in this way, but you will need um, a bit of customization around the database connect string. So um, we don't have that in the slide, but it's instead of localhost, it would be, we're jumping ahead here, it would be 127.0.0 .0 .0 colon 33, it's not 3306, um, 3307. I have this in a blog post. If people need it, they can feel free to contact me. But in any case, um, you can run drush config dash list and then do grep to narrow it down to only migrate items. And this will list out all of the migrations that the system knows about. And these are all things that can be put directly into your manifest file. And then you can run the command drush migrate dash manifest, provide it a database connection string. Um, this should be familiar if you've used other things on the command line that connect to databases. It's, uh, so I put here d6 user colon d6 password at localhost slash database name, which in this case is d6, and then the path to the manifest YAML file. Um, that should be enough to get you there. <laughs> one thing to note is that on the slide, although it's two lines, it should be one long line when you do it. Yeah, so that Drush manifest, it's legacy dash db dash url all as one, so just be mindful that the slides couldn't quite fit that long string in there. So now, sometimes you'll need to customize stuff, um, especially if you have a custom module that you yourself have written. Perhaps you have a custom field type. Um, a good example of something like this that took a while to get support in D7 was the address field. So maybe you're moving address field into something else, or maybe you're the author of that module and you want to uh, make a migration path for your users. You can um, put your plugins into your custom module and then you will need to deal with the fact that this is a custom entity type. So like nodes, those are in every site, those are in core, we're gonna deal with those. But if core doesn't know about it, then we need to deal with it. Um, cleanup tasks like Novella was suggesting with 
Uh, like maybe you don't want your image fields to come through, or maybe they're broken and you don't care. Um, clean up tasks could be done with some customization as well. And then um, you could actually go as far as making some of your theme, like moving your blocks into the locations in your new theme. You could do some customization for that as well. So these are just some examples of things you may wish to customize. This is just a really rough look at what the hook looks like. So um, we were just running this before the presentation. It's really awesome if you just want to cycle through those elements and say, if the field name is this, false. We don't want it. We don't want it. Go away. <laughs> it's like, we don't need this in the new site. So um, another thing that's kind of important if, you've, if you're new to programming in Drupal 8 is that you'll see that instead of, like we have the row variable here, and it's prefixed with the row type. Row is a type of object. It's, uh, so uh, it's not an array like it was in D7. Um, you'll have to look at the row method to see what the commands are to dump out all of the data. If you are new to working with object-oriented stuff, it's a fairly simple thing to do, but just like a fair warning that this is no longer just strictly an array, as with many things in the new system. And just another tip, um, whether you're new or not, um, the, you can run a drush print R with the hooks, and that's what really helped us out when we were doing it all afternoon. We were just looking at things as they were coming through. Yeah, drush print R, drush underscore print underscore R, and then you put in your variable there, will give you stuff dumped out on the command line. It's a tip that works in Drupal 7 as well, so um, it's worth looking at if you are like, why isn't this working? And then you're like, oh, okay, those three ran, and then suddenly that's where it went kaboom. Okay, and, and then you realize that maybe you have some corrupted data in your old system that maybe you want to fix. We talked a little bit about plugins already, so sorry for jumping ahead there. <laughs> um, one important point with when you do make plugins, you don't need to register them anywhere. You don't need to put them into your info file. Nothing. You just need to put it in the folder where it wants to go. So if you went into core modules, migrate underscore Drupal, source, plugin, D6, source, no, sort, no. <laughs> Sorry, almost there. It was, <laughs> anyway, you're in the plugin, you're in migrate, you're in source, and then you're in D6, for example. You would put it in a like place. You'd put it in the same naming convention, in the same folder in your own module. Right, so really the only place then that you'll need to declare the plugin is on a post-it note on your wall so you can actually <laughs> list those folders out. Um, and if you've never used plugins, there's a really awesome way you can try, and that is to make a custom block. Blocks are plugins in D8, so under your source folder, under your plugin folder, you can have a block folder. Go copy an existing block from somewhere you know that's easy to use. And you can just put it there and change the name in the comments, because comments are now code. Weird. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so some things that need polish. Um, D6 migrations do have small bugs, and that's what trips up the user interface. It, that's what trips up the migrate underscore upgrade module. So um, if you're able to go in there and do lots of testing when you're doing migrations for D6, please submit your patches to the core issue queue. Um, if you have to jump over stuff, uh, we've given you some tips on how you may be able to override that or just skip those things if they're not necessary for you. Uh, template development is needed for Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 as well as Drupal 8 to Drupal 8 because that will be a thing at some point, whether it's during beta or whether it's post-beta. <laughs> there will be rescue projects. <laughs> I'm, looking at, <laughs> I'm looking at some smiles in the audience. It's like, yeah, there will be. I know there's live Drupal 8 sites right now, and those are obviously not on the stable version because there is no stable version. So. At some point, there will need to be D8 to D8 migrations. Um, a major feature that existed in Drupal 7, well, major features, I guess I should say, there were things like rollbacks. You can't roll back right now. <laughs> you just reinstall, start over. So build things in modules that like create your site. 
at this point in time. And that way you can kind of keep moving with things, build and destroy, build and destroy, use continuous integration, if we're going to go buzzworthy, buzz, buzzwords here. <laughs> Um, continuous integration is wonderful for this because it already embraces that build and destroy methodology. Um, there were things called uh, incremental migrations. So, um, so you can rerun the migration twice, three times, four times, 400 times, that's fine. It's going to be additive. So like if you've added new nodes, more new nodes will come through. Um, but you can't do things yet like limit how many things you want to import. So in D7, you would like say, you could say like limit 10 and you'd only get 10 nodes. You can't do that yet, but it was put on the roadmap at the end of January, so it's going to be coming very soon. Um, Sorry, and as a silver lining to the no rollbacks thing yet, um, you have Drush SI where you know you can really just site install one more time. Um, and that'll, you know, it'll drop your database and do everything for you. And you also have um, Drush CEX, which is config export. Yeah, config export will let you see all the details. So if you're like, what's happening in D6 user? How did they, how did they set that up? How was it configured? Um, you can either go into the module that created it, so migrate Drupal, and under config install, that will be there. But if, if something has changed in the system, maybe you overrided something, or maybe you want to override something, you can use config management to dump the config see what's happening there, and then make some plans to change it. Um, not an expert in config management. I know there are people in the room who are. So, <laughs> so I defer to them for more details on that. But um, rest assured that you can look at the YAML files that are provided by the system that provide the default implementations of each of these migrations. You can see the details of like this D6 UID equals D8 UID. D6, whatever the field name was, gets changed into this new field name. Um, those things are all available to you. And of course, we've just said this many times, but it's worth repeating. Expect to remigrate. Expect to reinstall <laughs> because it's not final yet. I know if you've tried Drupal 8 and then you've gone away for a couple of weeks and come back, you'll probably have to reinstall. <laughs> so <laughs> just be aware that that's going to happen until everything is stable and finally like in that final 0.0, .0 branch. OK. So how you can get involved, this is kind of important because if you run into trouble, maybe you'll like want to tap into the community who can give you answers really quick because they're like, oh yeah, we know about that or oh, we should deal with that and other things. And this is how you would also get involved in developing the D7 templates or if you wanted to build templates for other programs other uh, platforms to bring them into Drupal. So um, there's this Drupal Groups page, uh, IMP, so it's short for import. I think it was an acronym at some point, but I don't know what it is. There's an IRC group. There's almost always somebody in this IRC group. It's uh, pound Drupal-migrate, and it's on Freenode like every other Drupal chat that's in IRC. Um, I believe if you've never used IRC, there's a page on drupal.org slash IRC. That will give you details on how to do that. And recently, we've changed the time of this, but there is a weekly call that you can do on Google Hangouts. Um, it's important to join the IRC group before this call happens, because that's how you get the URL. So um, that happens at 9 PM Eastern Standard Time, which I believe is where we are right now, um, at 9 PM. So, it's difficult to coordinate times. We're dealing with like <laughs> people in every time zone almost. It's just, you know, people are scattered throughout the globe and we've got people from Europe to Australia and everywhere in between and other places far flung all over the globe. So, so 9 p.m., hope you can make it. <laughs> um, it's a great place to get support for creating your own custom plugins and it's a good place to report problems in tests that you've run. If you're running a migration on multilingual data and you run into something that you think is unexpected, it can be good to check in in this group. So report the problems, please. <laughs> if you report the problems, that means it's going to be automatically resolved for the next person if we're able to put some code in there to fix that. And one really important way that you can get involved, come to the sprint tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> 
And if you can't get Drupal 8 installed and you're like, oh, this is terrible, I can't get it installed, um, we actually built some virtual machines that we can spin up for you if you're absolutely desperate. I hope not to do a ton of these things, but if you're absolutely, absolutely stuck and you can't get it installed, do come talk to us because we would rather, you know, people are able to get in there and do some work. So we will try to help you out with that if, you know, if your machine blows up and you need to use a tablet. We could actually support that, which is sort of ridiculous, <laughs> but, but kind of awesome. <laughs> okay, so I mentioned this earlier, but um, drupal.org slash project slash Drupal. I always get mixed up with these issue URLs. Anyway, the core issue queue is where you put your stuff for the D6 migrations. For D7 stuff, if you're interested in that, we're going to connect you with the sandbox, and the stuff lives there for now. I tend to stay away from the sandbox myself because I like to just work with core. So um, again, just come to the IRC group, say hello, ask people how to connect if, you, if you're very interested in D7. And again, test, test, test your multilingual stuff. Okay, we've mentioned this. Yes, uh, very important point. Do you want to mention this last one? <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> it's a really big can of worms. Um, I've been through the upgrade process many times, and for my own blog, it was on D5, and I moved it to D7, and I sat down at a cafe where I could make my angry face, and someone would bring me coffee. And it took me, like, about six hours of, like, Okay, I went from D5 to D6, and there's bugs in the upgrade process, and then I resolved the bugs, and then I spent an hour looking for the image fields, and then I was like, oh, I guess I'll redo it, so I redid it. Where are the image fields? Then I realized there was only five images on the site. <laughs> so then I upgraded to D7. All of these things sort of introduce, like, problems, because... In D5, the way that we error checked and validated things may be different than D6. So sites that have moved between different versions over and over and over, those sites are the riskiest ones to migrate. And those are the ones that we need to test the most because we may not know that sometimes user names could be formatted this weird way that we don't allow in D6. But they maybe got through the upgrade process. It would be weird, but it is possible. <laughs> so, so, so if you're planning on some site that like was perhaps in Drupal 4.7 and then got upgraded to D5 and then got upgraded to D6 and now you're like, okay, let's skip D7, that's a great opportunity to test that site and contribute feedback because that's the type of site that's going to have the most unusual data in it. And then of course, when I made, mentioned those five images, this is another good point. <laughs> Novella recently did a brochure site for her mom. <laughs> and it was like new content. There was really nothing to migrate. Copy and paste would work if you're doing a five-page site. <laughs> so it's worth noting. You know, don't like kill yourself on like doing all this stuff unless you really want to learn. And you know, if it's a really small site, like, you know, there's always these other options, but they're not the most ideal. And if you do want to learn this stuff for your bigger projects then investing that time can be very valuable. Well, and just, you know, to put a plug in there for copy and paste, um, it's a really great way to learn the interface for D8. And the interface for D8 is excellent, and I was able to actually teach it to my mom in one evening. So let me just say, it's for, it's for individuals, it's for businesses, it's for everybody, and that is a completely legit way to migrate your stuff. Yeah, so if it's a very small site, it, you may just want to do this for research purposes. I mean, it will get you there, but, but it is worth noting. I mean, Drupal 8's great for small sites, as Larry mentioned earlier this morning. It's like we can do big or small and, you know, all sorts of different types of sites. Um, I mentioned conf uh, doing uh, continuous integration, and um, we've kind of been working with this on a new site that we're kind of doing a mixed thing. So we're working on our own agency site. We have new content for most of the front-end stuff. So we're actually, using, we're actually using a module that we built that like, sets most of our new settings and creates some of our new content. And then we're using a migration for the rest. So these mixed mode kind of things will work with your continuous integration practices. So that's another thing to be mindful of. 
And again, another reason to use Drush if you don't just want to like, boom, like import everything because nobody likes to like migrate and then have to do a whole bunch of little tasks afterward because then you have to remember all those tasks. And then if the project gets put on hold, you have to remember all those tasks and you can't sleep at night because you're remembering all these tasks. So, okay, <laughs> we're like at the end. Um, I've got four links that I've been plugging since I was at Badcamp, and these things are things that you can use to teach yourself Drupal 8. And by teaching yourself Drupal 8, all of the stuff that we covered today will be really, really easy. Um, the first is the developer guide that's on www.drupal.org. That one is edited frequently by people, and if it goes out of date, please click edit and update it. But um, you can, if you're logged into drupal.org, go to this page, Scroll to the bottom, click the printer friendly link because it will render all the sub pages in one long HTML file. <laughs> and then you can just read it like a book and it's, it's fabulous doing that. Um, that will get you through most of the API changes that you need to know about as a developer. And that will get you a background on configuration management which is how all of this stuff like the manifest files, how those are constructed, all of that stuff is configuration management. So if you read the developer guide, even the first couple chapters, you're gonna have a really good understanding of how you can override all of this stuff really easily. Um, examples module has been used for years. Um, it's up to date as well. So if you're looking for like, how do I make a block in code? How do I do stuff like that? Like, um, go into that module if you're like curious about how to do a, an implementation of something because there is up-to-date stuff in there. And I actually went and into the examples module and used those to upgrade the developer guide. <laughs> so examples module is very up-to-date, so that's very useful. Um, the API docs on api.drupal.org are also up-to-date, but these are the, these, this is the documentation that's generated from the comments in code. So it's useful, but that, that needs to go through code review before it gets in. So um, there's less opportunity to just like add in a little like, oh, you need to do this also. Like it's harder to change that stuff because it's not just something you can click edit. Um, and lastly, the most important awesome one on this list, <laughs> change records. When you're in, if you're going in and starting to code something for your site in if you're doing a con continuous integration module or just, just like where did this go? Um, I know one time I was trying to use the watchdog command and I was like, watchdog does not exist. Okay, what do I do? What do I do? There's no watchdog. <laughs> I could, no, I shouldn't do any crazy things. I should go to the change records page and I just put in the word watchdog or whatever the command I'm trying to run that no longer exists, paste it into the search form and it's gonna give you a change record that says watchdog became this. And here's how you use it, the old way and the new way. And you can copy and paste that into your code and go home. <laughs> but it's also just a good general resource when you have errors, sometimes they are just because something may have changed. You know, so list changes, if you can't find it in the issue queue, or just search both, um, list changes is definitely a really great place for that. This can also be very useful if you started working on a Drupal 8 site, and then you got distracted for two weeks, and then it's broken for some reason when you updated, and you're like, what changed? That's what changed. There will be entries in there that will say, these three things changed since you were here two weeks ago, and you can just look at them and go, ah, it's probably that because I'm using that function. Okay, cool. So. Change records, wonderful. Thanks, change record team. <laughs> and we've got a few minutes for questions. I guess five minutes, oh, four, four minutes for questions. So, um, Jess, oh, uh, microphone. <laughs> um, so I have a correction slash clarification, a recommendation, and then an actual question. Okay. Um, the clarification, I just wanted to say regarding um, Drupal 8 to Drupal 8 updates and migrations, um, we didn't kill update.php, update.php is still in core. 
what we did kill is that you can't ever, 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 ever use it for upgrading from one version of Drupal, like a major version like Drupal 7 to Drupal 8. So by default, um, when Drupal 8 ships, you will still be using update.php to upgrade from 8.0.0 to 8.0.1, for example. Um, and also between betas, you'll also be using update.php, the same old, if, if you're a developer, you've written a module, you'll be writing the same old hook update and for that. But eventually, we would also like to include um, Drupal 8 source plugins so that you can do those Drupal 8 to Drupal 8 migrations as well. Um, the, the idea being that when you're running a minor update, um, you don't necessarily want to create and build out a second site for that. Sometimes you just need to fix one little thing, and so an update hook is all you need. Um, so that's just a minor clarification there. So but in soon, um, update.php is still there. You just can't use it to migrate anymore. Um, then the recommendation is um, regarding uh, views migrations. I, <laughs> I, would, I worked in the views and core team on my MXJM, and I would strongly recommend that you consider just rebuilding your views in the UI after you... Um, <laughs> a after you've migrated the rest of your data. Um, I, it's, it's great that someone's trying to build a plugin for that, but uh, the, views, the Views API is so complex, the data model is so full of things, and we've, not only have we, co very, it's very different under the hood than it was in Drupal 7, but also that last link on Ryan's last slide about change records, we kind of sort of don't really have them. Um, there's like two of them <laughs> about minor things maybe, and, but like the major ones that tell you the important things that change aren't there. So it's going to be difficult to write um, accurate migrations for views for that reason. So you might want to consider do everything else and then just rebuild the view because honestly it's probably going to be faster <laughs> than trying to fix all of the bugs with it. Yeah. Um, and then my question, I don't want to take up too much time, but my question was about the manifest files. Yeah. Um, so you said that, first of all, they're not required, right? It's just an optional thing that you can add on. Right? Um, they are required oh, if you're are. running them in Drush. It's in the Drush. only okay. way, yeah. And then the second thing was, you said that it would give you um, an error message if you, for example, tried to put a line for importing nodes before users. So no, not the order, but just if you omitted something. Oh, if you omitted, okay. Yeah. yeah, so, okay, so it will actually order them for you if you're not. Yeah, it will. Okay. There was a bug during Bad Camp where that, where one of them was out of line and it was fixed, so I believe it was fixed at least, so. Um, it will automatically resolve all the dependencies and order them correctly. Perfect. But if you forgot one, it will be like, oh, I do need that. Please add that. So um, thanks for those tips. That's wonderful. I, I'm actually one quick question <laughs> back to you. Did upgrade PHP get removed and brought back in? No, it didn't. OK. Interesting. That's OK. <laughs> cool. And yeah, views, rebuilding views has been something that, yeah, we've often redone between versions. So that is really important to note. So thank you again for those tips. <laughs> Uh, it's funny. Okay, we'll direct to Novella. Una pregunta: En Drupal 6, los pavos se guardaban en MD5. Al pasar a Drupal 7, se guardan un hash. ¿Cómo lo hacen en Drupal 8? Sigue la misma política de Drupal 7. Do you want to just repeat that in English? No, I Okay. Bueno, en la versión de Drupal 6, los passwords de los usuarios se guardaban en MD5, ¿sí? Uh, he's saying that in Drupal 6, user passwords were stored in MD5, but in Drupal 7, it is a hash. So, well, I really don't know how is it in Drupal 8, but how are you dealing with that? It's dealt with in the same way it was between the upgrade to Drupal 6 to Drupal 7. I believe it's actually the same code, just running in a different place. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the format is, I think it's the same between 7 and 8. The, the hashing strategy is the same. So it's the same idea that it did from Drupal 6 to Drupal 7. It will convert them. Um, and it, it deals with it in a way that's secure. So I. I I don't know the specific details because I haven't dealt with this in D8, but I have looked at the function in D7, and it, it does a transformation, and that code has been brought over. So, yeah. Uh, other questions? Yes. Um, here. Uh, oh, hi. <laughs> yeah, uh, can I speak in Spanish? You can try. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I in, in relation con con la migración de Drupal 6 a Drupal 8, ¿verdad? 
¿Cómo sería más o menos en la migración de Drupal 7 a Drupal 8? Sé que todavía no está lista, pero según su experiencia, ¿cómo creen que va a ser? No, I, I'm saying that uh, now is not ready to a uh, migration process to Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, right? But you know how to do it with Drupal 6 to Drupal 8. Now, how do you think that going to be the migration process in the future, of course, about the Drupal 7 to Drupal 8? It, the same strategy, exactly. So it's just we will put a copy of the Drupal 7 templates. The same strategies will apply. If you go to migrate upgrade user interface, you just put in the database credential. It will detect that it is Drupal 7. It will know that it understands Drupal 7, and it will run them. So it, the, the, this is why we have migrate module and migrate Drupal module, so that the migrate module is generic, and it can run any platform. And then migrate Drupal is just this specific. So, and then on Drush, again, same thing. So you just list the name of migration. In that case, the name of migration will be D7 underscore user. So the naming will be different. Uh, I think we've been called for time, so <laughs> thank you, everyone. Gracias. <laughs>